welcome back to What Are Teenips with General Disturbance. This is the M12, it's the Tier 7 American SPG. It's located on the south spawn of Mountain Pass, and this one is under the command of Fork U2. Yes, it's one of my accounts, and this was one of the games I played recently. In fact, this whole video is about a couple of the games that I played, and the next video too, actually, but don't let that put you off. Game on! Now, the Tier 7 American SPG has now been reduced from 700 out to 600. And, uh, well, with the premium, as you can see, I can do 750 Alpha and Petrick 49mm. Yet, I'm not carrying any AP rounds at all. I've found that this is one of the better combinations. Do most of your damage with the standard HE so you get stunned. And a few rounds for premium rounds, just in case the enemy gets into a position where you can whack them for a lot of hit points. Now this battle was a bit of a surprise for me because it didn't last very long but you'll see that very shortly. 22.01 seconds is the standard reload I've well the reload that I've got on this RT. It's not the standard reload. Now I fired that round in at the enemy hill because there's nearly always somebody, a tank destroyer of that type, sitting on that corner. The standard reload is 26.56 seconds, so I've knocked off a few seconds, you could say four seconds off the reload time. And we don't know if the first shell actually hit anything, but I'm now aiming towards the Western Pass, and it looks like our team have pushed around really quickly on the Western Pass, and there's no shots for me over there. Because the enemy are behind him behind the rocks, so nothing I can do about that corner. And it's now beginning to look as if we've got an enemy tank, a T-150, trying to make its way along the bridge road. So I've got to move over to this corner if I'm going to get shot. In fact, there's two enemy tanks there, a 45 TP and a T-150. So I've got to hit these guys because they're attacking our tanks. Well, the first shot goes in, stuns both of them, and I am picking up some stun assist. Okay, I'm aiming for the 45 TP first. This is the higher tier tank out of those two. It's a tier 7, the other one's a tier 6. 45 TP's been very badly damaged, but I might be able to take him out of the game as a gun. Guns out. Yep, he's out. And the T-150 dies very quickly. Okay, so I'm changing position because I was in a bit of an open spot there. As you can see, the enemy is starting to push round on the western corridor. And yeah, I'm a bit concerned now because there's nobody protecting us from that E25. It looks like he's bound for our cap. There's nobody blocking any of those guys coming up. In fact, we've got nobody on the bridge road at all. Okay, I'm going for the VK3802 D. Rounds out. Direct hit for 236. Still worried about the E25. He's out of sight now. And I've got a whole host of enemies to fire at, but. I am very concerned about that E25. We do have a, a Super Hellcat, but yep, they've spotted the E25. He's rounded our cap area now. And I fire around at the Super Chappy, but I now realize that, yeah, I've been spotted. The E25's coming up the hill towards me. And now I'm in full retreat. I've got to get into cover just in case that E25 comes up the hill. I'm almost loaded. Okay, we're ready to go, but where is the E25? Here he comes. Lock on. And I put a round into him. He puts one round into me. And another one. I've got to pull back behind the rock before he finishes me off altogether. Next shot will kill me. But he's got more to think about now because the T43's come round and... Oh. The E25 was ready for that and he actually put another round in to finish me off. I came forward thinking he turned around and was going away, but he finishes me off. So, yeah, kind of a brief game, only four minutes long for me. It's not looking too good for the team either, because we're down to four tanks. There's still ten enemies out there, and now we're down to three, and it looks like this one is going to be a loss. Such a pity. I'm afraid this one went the way of um, a lemming train because most of the tanks went up the uh, ice road and uh, very few stayed to guard the bridge road uh, or the bowl 
and the Western tanks got uh, Western Pass tanks got wiped out. So yeah, I'm afraid this game is about to be over. The T-54 first prototype is the last tank alive, and he won't be for long because he's surrounded and he's gone. So this game is already over. So that looks pretty bad. It's a loss, but we'll see the end of battle results in a short while. The second replay in this battle is on the Sand River map. I'm in the Lorraine 15550 and I'm using my NA account Bigger Stickers. Game on! Well this is another tier 7 RT, the tier 7 French SPG, based on the Lorraine 40 ton tank and with a 155mm howitzer. Okay, ready to go. I've got a 6, is it 680? trying to remember 630 alpha it's, it's actually been reduced i believe it's about 700 before and i'm aiming towards the enemy in the riverbed in fact one of the ramps leading up from the riverbed an amx 1375 moving nearby and we're waiting for one of the enemy to poke their nose up oh that was the enemy rt and making their presence known got a type 64 doing a quick bit of spotting Trying to work out where he's going to go next. Oh, he's disappeared from sight. He comes up the bank. I fired at him thinking he was actually going to crest the bank and uh, to do a bit of spotting, but he didn't. And I'm changing position. Now, AMX 1357 on the south side of the uh, map. He's doing a quick spotting run as well. And we've got nobody down there. In fact, the nearest tank is a T-52 in the village. I'm going to stir a mill blocking uh, the east side of the map or stopping him from coming up there. A KB-2 has turned up at the uh, the bend in the river. And I'm dialed in. Rounds out. Direct hit on him there. That was a standard HE round which does stun. We've got a KB-3 appeared. And I thought for a second, what is he doing over there? Because he's certainly not moving. We've got two tanks in the centre now, FB201 and the KV2. I'm going to try and hit that FB201. Rounds out. That was a direct hit. Yep, he definitely took that one because there was no explosion at all. And I'm changing position. That's why the reticule suddenly bloomed up. I do that in aim view so I can uh, continue to have a look and see what the enemy is doing. You don't have to come out of aim view just to move the vehicle around to avoid counter battery. 40 TP, gone up on the ramp. Easy target, bounce out. Direct hit, 251 hit points. I think if you maximize your damage using the standard HE, of course you stun the enemy. And if you can encourage your teammates to fire at them, then you will get some damage assistance or stun assist on again okay kb3 is moving but he's still there okay i've got to put a round into this guy he's backing up keep backing up keep backing there you go right onto your engine deck 166 only though he's a tier 7 tank okay we've got the fb201 and the kb2 still sitting on that corner the standard reload is 28.57 seconds. That's out. I've got just over 24 seconds on my reload. Managed to get some stun assist on the FB201 and the shell hit him for 282. That KV2 looks like he's about to expire. I would not be surprised if he goes down. And he has, yep. The IS-2M decided to take him out. I fire at the FB-201 and splash him for 163. So I'm racking up the damage. 1,200 so far. The game's been going less than four minutes. It's all about focusing on getting as much damage as you can in the time, making the best use of it. The enemy hasn't gone up to the north route, so we're not having to focus on that at all. The only concern is that they might be on the south route and we just can't see them. Going for the 40 TP. Rounds out. Oh, that shell veered right to the left, and you can see that. And uh, we can hear the rumble from the enemy RT firing. It's an M12 on the enemy team. Okay, 
Okay, moving over to the north bank, we've got a P-43 Biz using the dunes to approach us without being spotted. He's not being fired upon by our teammates. We do have a Yag Panther who could hit him. And that shell went a little wide for my liking. Really need the Yag Panther. Oh, <laughs> Yag Panther did intervene and he's out of the game as well. I suppose uh, Klaus Kellerman would say it's another Muppet re removed from the battlefield. You know, drive in the open like that and you are likely to get hit. He was trying to protect himself from the tanks in the riverbed, but he wasn't protecting himself from enemy tanks who were coming towards, uh, who were sitting above our cap area watching. Super Hellcat is coming up the south side. Yes, this one I feared. And we've got a T-78 near him. Rounds out the Super Hellcat. Whoa! Now that actually was a penetrating shot and unfortunately I pressed the button just when I fired and there's the counter battery trying to come in. They do know where I am. They're trying to take me out but they failed to on that occasion. Yep, that must have been a penetrating shot on the Super Hellcat for 536. He has got thin armor. 40 TPs next. Line him up, work out where he's going, rounds out. Yep, that one hit target as well. Direct hit again. I'm changing position because now we know that the enemy RT is interested in trying to counter battery me and we're one tank down on the enemy at the moment. We still haven't located that T-78, he's actually moved, but I'm going to go for a bit of shot, a few shots at the enemy tank destroyers above their cap area. Put it just behind that bush, ramp up, there's nearly always somebody there and the shell explodes but no damage. At least so far as I know there was nobody there. There might have been. Okay, there are still some enemy tanks. And look there, we've got the KB-3, the one I hit earlier, who was sitting up near the enemy cap area. So we'll put around into him. Rounds out. It goes to one side. It wasn't a very good shot, really, on my part. I should have aimed it better. But I'm changing position to avoid counter-battery. Okay. You can see that I've got one mark of excellence on the barrel of my Lorraine. Only one at the moment. This is the first game I've played with it since the 1.13 update. Okay, next target is that T-78. He suddenly appeared again. And he's fairly low on hit points. And, oh, <laughs> yes. Well, the 40 TP on our team took care of him. The next target is the enemy 40 TP, who's actually just sitting above the riverbed, look, riverbed looking at our IS-2. That's out on him, and he's out of the game. So my second kill, and I've changed position again to avoid counter-battery. That KV-3 is still there, and he's now pushing the wreck forward. Oh, that sounded like a counter-battery shot, but in actual fact, it was aimed at the VK-302M. Rounds out the KB, and, oh, it falls short. Not the uh, palm tree down, but it didn't do any other damage than that. And you notice I reverse back, but I turned at the same time, do the S maneuver, creates a little S in the sand, and that moves you sideways as well as backwards so that the enemy can't really get a good counter battery. KB3 is trying to get our IS-2M, and before I can shoot, he's gone. So we're now two tanks above the enemy. We were one tank behind, but we're now ahead. And it's looking bad for the enemy now. They could approach our cap from any direction, actually, if you think about it. Going down the center wouldn't be a very good move because we do have tanks blocking there. But they could come over the north and they could go through the south. But they are coming through the riverbed. Challenger goes in. Ball steep. He's going after the Ice 2M, and I think he'll probably get him. He's got the 120mm. And, well, he's gone. The SU-100M got him. Or, no, what SU-100. The FV-201's come back for some more, but he's got minimal hit points, so he is a splash kill now, if I can put a round near him. Okay, lining him up, working out where he's going to be. Should be about there. Rounds out. Oh, he didn't. He didn't move back as far, but I've shaved another seven hit points off him. Made him much easier to kill. If he'll wait another 
10 seconds I can put a round into him and send him back to the garage. Now, where are you? There you are. Bounce out this time, it should do something. Oh, 19 hit points this time. And this time round, the two T25-2 gets the uh, kill. Now, I thought I saw the um, the tracer from the enemy RT come from up here on the hill. So he's probably either in that spot there or behind one of the rocks. Fairly sure I saw him come from that direction. We've got an enemy tank destroyer coming in from the north. But I've got plenty of teammates between me and him. So I'm moving. And he's out of the game anyway. That was the SU-152. It looks to me like we're in the end game now. There's only two enemies left. We've got the M12 and an ARL V39. So I'm going to motor up the other end of the map. And try and get as close as I can to the enemy. The shorter the distance between you and the enemy, the much more likely you're going to get a shot on target quickly, which will end the game. I know some people find it a bit surprising that an RT in the end game is moving right the way up the other end of the map. But I suppose really, if you think about it, it's just that we know that we can do this and we're confident in our ability. Oh, the M12 died before I could get a shot on target. I was just dialing in. That's another kill for the T25 too. He's already got three and I've only got two at the moment. Ah, and there's the last enemy. It's the ARL V39 and he's up on the hill. So I'm going to try and get a shot on him if I can. Just dialing in. Okay. Lining it up. No, the moment I get dialed in, he moves into cover. And I've got no shot other than to stun him, so I'm going to do that. Okay, he's stunned and he's taken out of the game immediately afterwards. So we've got a victory. Well, it'll probably surprise you, but I did get a third mark of excellence from that game in the M12. It was a very brief game. I was taken out, um, well, after a short battle, but I did get some damage on the enemy. And that damage helped tip me over the top in order to get my average high enough to get the third mark. If we look at the, uh, we can also see I got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. I got eight in that one. My win eight wasn't very high, 978. It means really that my average score on previous use of this RT has been pretty high. And it's just, I was having difficulty trying to tip it over into the third mark. But this battle I actually absolutely had no problem with at all um, in doing some damage. And that earned me the third mark of excellence. If you see, um... On the table, I actually only did uh, a fraction of the damage that the top scorers did. The M6A2E1, that's the mutant, managed to get 3,092 hit points in that game. He picked up the high caliber and steel wall. The second highest damage was done by their Chimera, 2646. And the 7032 was our high score with 2,566. I only managed 921 hit points out of that one which puts me way down the table on damage, but uh, it was still a good game all the same in, in the fact that I did actually get something out of the game. And when it came to kills, I shared second place because the top scorers were the P43, the E25 and the Hummel, who got three kills apiece, and they had their mutant get two kills and so did the 7032 and myself. When it came to base XP, I'm way down the table for... Um, the high scorer was the Mutant with 1,111. The E25, 1,062. That was the guy who killed me. And he actually picked up a Pascucci's and a Brothers in Arms in that game. And uh, the third highest damage was the P43 Tur with 947. I only got 299 out of it. But I got enough damage to get my third mark. I fired six rounds in the entire game. Got four direct hits, no penetrations, but eight splash. Damage of 921 hit points, of which 677 were at more than 300 meters. Three hits received, all three penetrations, all came from the E25 who took me out of the game. Six enemy vehicles were damaged, two were killed, and 771 hit points of stun assist off six stuns. On a premium count, I earned 22,179 credits, got 11,090 from personal reserves, a total of 33,269 altogether. And after repair and ammunition resupply, took away 25,082 credits altogether. I earned 448 XP, 224 from personal reserves, took away 672 altogether. So 
not a bad game. As I said, another one bites the dust. That's a that's a yet another MOE that's fallen since the um, the changes on 1.13. We are noticing a lot of RT players are now picking up third marks because a lot of RT players have left the game. All down to Wargaming's fault. They shouldn't have made the changes. They should have just altered the number of RT that were in each battle. And if they'd done that, they would have kept those players as customers. But what they've done instead is they've alienated a lot of clusters, customers, including myself, who won't buy anything from Wargaming anymore. We're going to become free-to-play players from now on. And uh, we won't purchase a damn thing from them because we're sh going to show our contempt for them as they showed their contempt for us as RT players. We'll continue to hit the enemy. But uh, after a while, they'll soon feel the loss of a huge number of uh, what previously were premium players who now just won't buy anything from Wargaming. If we look at the second game, that was in the Lorraine 15550, you can see I've got an ace tanker in that game. Even though the changes happened, 4,338 uh, was the win eight. I got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits, 16. I got a confederate medal for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on my team. And if we look at the team score, we can see that, yes, I'm second place on damage in the entire game. The top scorer was the T25-2, got 2,738. He picked up high caliber. I got 2,605, not far behind him. And the third highest damage was our Yag Panther with 1,967. When it came to kills, I shared the top spot with the... Uh, oh, I didn't share the top spot. I shared second place again. Um, the T25-2 managed to get three kills. So did the Yag Panther. I got two along with the vk 302 m and two members of the enemy team, their ARL and their Super Hellcat. Actually, did I check the XP? No, I didn't, actually. When it came to XP, I was in second place. Yes, the T25-2 did the best. 1,148. I managed to get 1,011. We were the only two players who managed to get over 1,000. I suspect that he was an ace tanker as well. If we look at the detail report. We can see I fired 20 rounds in that game. Seven direct hits, one penetration, and five, uh, 18 splash as well. I'm pretty sure that the penetration shot was that one on the Super Hellcat, because it, yeah, it took him out altogether with that one shot. It's a pity I came out of aim view just as I pressed the wrong button at the moment after firing, and it clicked me out of aim view, but luckily we saw the shell go in and saw the symbol rising, showing that I'd actually taken the guy out. Uh, 2,605 hit points of damage, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damaged eight of the enemy, killed two, did 467 hit points of damage assistance, plus 347 hit points of stun assist off 15 stuns. So in this game, it wasn't the uh, stun assist that actually aided me getting the ace tanker. It was the actual damage I did during that game, and that's even with reduced damage shells. I also did, um, as I said, 354, uh, 347 stun assist of 15 stuns on a premium count. I earned 46,325 credits, 55,000 for completing a mission and events, total of 101,325 credits altogether. After ammunition respite, I took away 81,185 credits. So even if you take off the 55,000 from the mission completion, you're still looking at a substantial amount of credits overall. So yes, it would have been profitable either way. Uh, when it came to XP, I earned 1,516 from that game, 3,034 for completing a mission, 758 from personal reserves, took away 5,308 experience points altogether. As I said, working as intended. Yes, I'm getting enough damage to earn an ace tanker without the stun assist. So, I think actually my criticisms of the reduction of damage may have been harsh because it is possible to earn the ace tanker without actually getting any stun assist. But all the same, I still view that Wargaming made a horrendous error and they've actually deterred a lot of people from playing RT, which is what they intended all along. Because after all, all those people who were whining about RT, they wanted Wargaming to take RT out of the game altogether. Wargaming didn't take them out of the game because they know full well if they did, they'd lose a huge number of paying customers. But they've lost those paying customers anyway because they were so stupid. All they had to do was reduce the number of RT per battle and they would have had uh, kept those people as customers. But no, they intended to do what the, uh, the whiners wanted to do, the people who can't play the game and still get hit by RT. Um, no, they intended to pay lip service to them and uh, pandered to their whining 
and took uh, basically um, ruined Arty in the process, or at least I feel that they ruined Arty. And the fact that I'm actually still getting damage is actually testament to my skill with this Arty, not to the fact that uh, Wargaming um, has made it easy enough for us to get damage. In actual fact, I think it's, it's it is fairly difficult for some players to actually get damage with RT. In fact, a lot of people have told me that they've just got sick and tired of uh, the failure of RT now to be able to give them what they need in order to carry on the game. Some people tell me that they use the RT to earn their missions every day and they just can't do it now. So they've given up. But uh, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep on going, uh, except I'm not going to buy anything from Wargaming now. So you've lost the customer. You've lost a paying customer and you've gained somebody who's going to criticize you and keep hitting those uh, those whining idiots who can't cope with RT uh, to annoy them and stun them and make them realize yep we're still here and we're going to make them pay for that so i hope you enjoyed both those replays if you did please give this video a like do subscribe to our channel leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm <laughs> And thank you for watching.